Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me on a very special episode. We are talking about the five things that I don't do in my home as a professional interior designer. I've been thinking a lot about what you come to the channel for and it might be to look at really beautiful interior design images of these immaculate spaces and these beautiful homes. It could also be that you're tuning in to hear my design advice from week to week. If you're just starting out your home and decorating for the first time, you could also be in the sourcing and procuring phase of your interior design journey or you could be smack dab in the middle of a renovation. Watch this video to get the inside scoop at what the pros know. You might even be surprised at some of my answers. I recently shared in a previous video that in the last couple of weeks, I made the really difficult decision to lay my dog down to rest. I was in the hospital with her doctor and of course, you know, in tears, I'm like, what would you do? You know, what would you do if this is your dog? And of course she answered, you know, this is probably the most common question I get. When we're faced with everyday issues where we have to make really important decisions, we always want to rely on expert advice. We want to know what the pros know. I went home and I thought a lot about what the doctor said and that sentiment really echoed in my ear. That might be one of the reasons why you're tuning into this channel. You want to know what I would do in my own home. Maybe the things that I would do you, maybe the things that I steer clear of. As I started to write this list, it just became very, very extensive and I knew that I had to turn it into a series. So today we will be breaking down my top five things that I don't do in my own home as a pro interior designer. Let's get right to it. Number one, I don't fill up every blank wall. I don't fill up every blank wall with a piece of artwork. I don't feel the need to fill every single space, decorate every single surface with a home decor item, an accessory, or a little tchotchke, or even something that's sentimental to me. Remember that design is all about controlling what the viewer sees. So depending on what your design intent is, you could fill up an empty space, you could leave it blank. To me, negative space is just as important as positive space where there is a really beautiful item that decorates a surface or a wall. For starters, I live in a mid-century ranch style home. I don't even have a whole lot of walls to begin with, but what I do have is a ton of floor to ceiling windows. So with the minimum amount of wall space that I have, I choose to very carefully curate a selection of artwork and photography and images that really have sentimental value. Anything that lands in my home and on my walls especially really have to have a personal significance to me. One of the first things that people notice in my home is that I don't don't have a lot of personal photography. And that's true and evident for a lot of reasons. Number one, I started my online social media journey as a style blogger. So I have taken tons and tons and tons of pictures of myself, of my family, of my surroundings. I just don't choose to decorate my wall with personal photos. I do have some interior hallways and some dedicated spaces where I line a very specific gallery, but in terms of kind of popping up photos and artwork everywhere. That's just not my style. You'll see in my lounge that I do have some strategic DIY artwork in place, but the rest of it is really just empty blank wall space. I kind of like the walls to have some breathing room. I like the home to grow with us. I'm not in a race to decorate every single surface that has been untouched which is also why you don't see artwork behind me in my home office studio. You might remember from my garage makeover that this home office studio has been almost completed for a year now, but I'm really slowly becoming inspired by my evolving taste. I wanna be captivated by the artwork that's on my walls. I wanna be immersed in a really beautiful color story or a really beautiful palette. I'm willing to take my time and do my due diligence to find those perfect pieces that really speak to my style. I have this huge empty blank wall behind my bed in my primary bedroom. I even removed all of the baby pictures from my primary bedroom walls because I feel like I just need a different vibe in there. Although I love my kids to death, it doesn't mean that I need to have these like huge massive photos of them everywhere. Even in the girls room as I'm putting the finishing touches on their bedroom makeover, I have left the walls completely bare and empty. I imagine as they're growing and transitioning in school, I'm going to have 
a ton of my kids artwork to be able to tape on the walls to put on a cork board I mean I really just kind of want the artwork and everything that lines our walls to evolve with our taste and style another key feature of mid-century ranch style homes is no attic space I have these vaulted ceilings with exposed beams which I absolutely am obsessed with I love that I have these high ceilings these slanted walls but what I also have is a lot of these overhangs and ledges that kind of looms over some of the common areas these soffits are architectural so they're actually housing a lot of my air conditioning duct work but when we moved into the home the ceilings were completely exposed I thought that that was such a huge design opportunity that was missed so I enlisted my contractor to cut out some really inexpensive plywood and kind of line every single open ceiling with the plywood so that I could run low voltage LED light strips and really just highlight all of these architectural details and features that are inherent in my home so next time that you have like a really massive ledge or an empty niche or even a blank white wall space instead of filling it up with something decorative think about how you could use lighting to highlight architectural features that make your home really beautiful and unique another thing that I don't do as an interior designer in my own home is that I don't decorate around a trend I have a lot of trend spotting videos on the channel and I find that trends are just so fun for me as an interior designer I really have to stay on top of what's out there in the market and the reason I do that is because that's what the clients are exposed to back then when I started design there was no Pinterest there's no Instagram we were really relying on design books design magazines even interior design shows in HGTV to kind of get more inspiration as a consumer or a homeowner trends are what you are exposed to the most it is my job as a professional and your interior designer to not only interpret those trends but to find a way to make them personal to you how do you incorporate key features of an interior design trend into your own home to make it unique for yourself I want my space to feel personal to me I wanted to have a very classic timeless look that would appeal to me for a very long period of time now that doesn't mean that I don't use trends to help influence my design decisions it just means that I don't rely on a specific trend to design my entire home around back then in my heyday when I was working for Kelly Wurstler I was exposed to a lot of high-end luxe Hollywood Regency finishes I mean that was when she was kind of finishing her modern glamour book she had started with Domicilum Decoratus and that was a book and project that I was helping to source and design which is also where my love for bold glamorous interiors were born now my style has evolved so much throughout the years I mean I was really obsessed with amber interiors for a while I love her historical mix of like old antiques with kind of modern rust vibes I love that desert modern kind of tone on tone warm neutrals vibe but at the end of the day I am just inspired by color from that warm neutral vibe to where I am now I really love historical references with modern finishes and furnishings I'm obsessed with everything French Joseph Duran is one of my favorite French architects and interior designers I love how he marries old architectural features like panel molding and cornices and transoms and arches in really beautiful modern timeless contemporary settings I mean his finishes are just so stellar so perfect and that's kind of where my style is going now I really want to look for a natural organic textures I really want to let beautiful natural finishes dictate the style of design in each particular room so while I don't design around a certain trend it doesn't mean that I don't allow old and new trends to help influence some of my design decisions next on the list of things that I don't do in my own home is that I don't buy all new things now this also comes from a young and broke mentality I remember some of my first jobs were working in retail and I mean even though I was working on commission selling shoes I wasn't making a whole lot of money but I remember saving up all my money for two things number one it was skincare like I knew back then La Mer was just like it but besides that I used to save up money to go to secondhand stores and thrift stores to look for like old used antique furniture I still have some of these pieces
pieces in my home now that I would never part with. But that's also why I never bought new things. You know, number one, I couldn't afford it. And number two, they just don't make furniture like they used to. You know, those like really heavy duty, solid wood, classic pieces, like indestructible pieces. Now it's like all about veneers. It's all about distressing. It's, it's all about ways to manipulate really solid, heavy furniture with like cheaper counterparts so you can kind of mass produce it and resell it. So that's also another point that I really want to drive home. Always invest in quality pieces, whether they're old, they're new, they're secondhand, they're refurbished, they're repurposed. Think about making the investment so that you can hang on to these pieces for a long period of time. My home tells a story of where I am in life. I could walk through my home and tell you exactly where I sourced this piece. You know, it was $500 on Craigslist. The seller was living in Ross Warren. You know, I drove my little mini SUV over there and I haggled, negotiated. I got a really good deal and I still have that piece today. Like that is interior design, everyone. You know, it's to tell your story, share your story. Actually, that's, that's that's not a bad idea. I probably might owe you a home tour coming up and kind of like a sneak peek into where I am in my life right now. If that is something that you want to see on the channel as a future video, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. Number four on the list of the five things that I don't do in my own home as a professional interior designer, I don't need everything to be perfect. Now don't get me wrong, like you, I want my home to look magazine ready at all times. I mean, we want Pinterest perfect room, we want Instagram worthy spaces, but that's just not realistic. You know, I have two little active toddlers. I have a playroom that's right smack dab in the middle of my living room. I have a granite in the kitchen that has chips, it has stains, it has dings, it has scratches. I have a brand new dining table that I just got. It's this really beautiful lacquered piece and already it has these little chips. But to me, I just, I don't trip out over those things. I love to embrace those little imperfections. To me, that tells the story of your life and home. I remember exactly when the countertop had that little ding in it from when we were like madly rushing to entertain our home and host a dinner party. I remember just last weekend, I hosted my niece's birthday and it was just like a house filled with kids and parents and pets and it was just great. It was just like, this is life. And then of course, you know, I inspected my table the next morning and all already I see like these little chips in the lacquer and it makes me happy. I know some people might really stress over those things but that's also why I love to create the habit of sourcing secondhand or used furniture or vintage furniture because nothing feels too precious to me. You know if I get a spill or a stain on the sectional it's all right. You know that's also why I specify performance fabric in the first place. You know I could easily unzip those cushions and kind of just throw it in the wash. My upholstery is gonna get a few stains and my cushions will never stay perfectly intact and I'm all right with that. I just don't try to prioritize having everything in its kind of like new status, new state. I want guests to come over and feel like they can just plop down on the sectional and kind of put their feet up. I want the kids to run around and be young, wild, and free. When it comes to materials aging or furniture having a little wear and tear, that's perfectly fine with me and that is something that I would absolutely want you to adopt in your own home just for a little bit more peace of mind. And the last item on today's list is that I don't rely on anyone else's advice as to how I decorate my own home. I mean, this sounds like a really loaded tip seeing as how you are tuning into my design channel for my design advice, but that's precisely it, everyone. I mean, I'll dish it, but I won't take it. And here's why. I have become so confident in my own design choices that if I ever ask for anyone's advice, it's really just to hear a fresh perspective on something that I already know. Learning to be confident in your own preferences, your design style, your aesthetic, and your choices is not going to happen overnight. Your tastes will change, your style will evolve, but the only way to truly gauge what sets your soul on fire is to really get out there and be immersed in the design and decorating world. World. Back then when I was a teenager, I was just thumbing through design magazines from cover to cover. I would literally read every single article because I just wanted to be immersed in the entire journey of how you even put together a space. I mean, where do you even begin? And to me, that design process was just so exciting. As I got older and as I started working, I had jobs, I got paid, I had money. I would spend money on decor items and decorative objects 
projects and all these little DIY projects of things that spoke to me and how I could express myself through my home and space. I will always share my professional design advice and my opinion on the channel. I will always let you know some of the design rules that were put into place. But I also want to encourage you to kind of throw these design rules out the window and come up with your own process, your own way of curating your space so that it feels personal and important to you. As I was putting this list together, I came up with so many other items that could have made like an hour long video. However, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm actually going to break it down and I'm turning this episode into a brand new series. As an interior designer, is there anything else that you want to know about my process? Do you want to learn more about the ins and outs of designing your space? Do you have a blank slate to start with? Are you starting with a single room? Are you knee deep into a remodeling or renovation process? I would love to help steer you in the right direction. Remember that this channel is all about you. How can I help you with my interior design tips, with my experience and my expertise? If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if there are any other types of design videos that you want to see on the channel. Share this video with anyone you know who loves interior design as much as we do and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop on the channel every single Tuesday and don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram for more weekly design tips. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.